In this video, we're going to use the second partials test to find all relative extrema of this function. So we're going to start off by finding a critical point. So we need that before we use the second partials test. And a critical point is a point in the domain of the function where either both first partials are equal to zero at the same time or uh, one of the first partial derivatives is undefined. So to use the second partials test, you first find the critical points, which we'll do, and then you look at this expression here. So d equals, uh, and I'm, I'll use g since we have g in this problem. So gxx, gyy, minus gxy squared. So this is the mixed partial. And you evaluate this expression at your critical point. And you have a couple different cases. So case one, is if it's positive and fxx is positive. And again, all of this is happening at your critical point. If this happens, you have a min. Case two, if d is positive and this is negative, and again, all of this is happening at your critical point, then in this case, you have a max. Case three, d is less than zero, in this case, you have a saddle point. It's called a saddle point because if you look at a 3D graph, it actually looks like a horse's saddle. Like It looks like, like the saddle of a horse, hence the name saddle point. And the worst case is case four. If D is equal to zero, uh, then no information, so no info. So this is the test we're gonna use in this problem. So let's go through it very, very carefully and show all the work very, very carefully. So we'll start by finding the critical points. So to do that, you compute GX and GY. So gx is the partial derivative with respect to x. So when we do that, uh, the y is a constant. So this will just be 6y, because the derivative of x is 1. gy, this is the partial derivative with respect to y. So the x is constant, so it'll just be 6x, because the derivative of y is 1, so 6x. These are not undefined anywhere. Remember, critical points can occur when the first derivatives are undefined. It doesn't happen. The other place they can occur is when they're both zero. So you solve this system of equations. So both of these equations have to be true. Well, the only way the first one is true is if y is equal to zero. And the only way the second one is true is if x is equal to zero. So both of them are satisfied when both of these conditions hold. There's no issues. So our critical point in this case, I'll write it up here, our CP is zero, zero. Notice it's in the domain of the original function. A lot of thinking for something so easy, but it could get more complicated, but it doesn't in this case, so that's good. I'm gonna put this in a box. Okay, so now we have to uh, figure out this, this expression d. So we have gx, so gxx, that's just the derivative here, so that's just gonna be zero. gyy, that's the derivative here with respect to y, that's gonna be zero. And now we need the mixed partial, gxy. So gxy means we look at gx and we take the derivative with respect to y. So that's gonna be six. Right, this one was zero because we took the derivative with respect to x, so y is a constant, so it goes away. Likewise, this one was zero because we took the derivative of this with respect to y. x is a constant, so it goes away. This one is six because we took the derivative of this with respect to y. So the derivative of y is one, so we just got six. So now let's look at d. So let me specify that we're evaluating at our critical point. So at 0, 0, d is equal to gxx, gyy, minus gxy squared. So this is going to be, these are subscripts, I'm being really sloppy here, really, really sloppy. <laughs> so this is going to be 0 minus 36. So this is minus 36. That's less than zero. So at our critical point, I mean, it's always negative 36, but sometimes you can plug it in and so things will change. There's no x's and y's here, so, so it's negative. So we have d less than zero. d less than zero, we have a saddle point. So we have a saddle point. So to finish, we actually have to find the point. So now what you do is you take your x and your y and you plug them into the original. So g of zero, zero, so you get zero. So your saddle point is zero, zero, zero. So the origin is a saddle point for this function. So whenever d is less than zero, automatically, you don't need to look at these. Um, you just go straight to the saddle point. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.